There's a lot of films I watched as a kid as something in the background when I went to sleep. Sometimes my choices were a little odd, but I faintly remember a collection of details. I didn't always see the classics that were before my time at the time, but sometimes I did. And Jim Carrey's 1990s peak goof phase was something I wasn't unfamiliar with. The mask, as it was known, I remember all sorts of details of. You know, it's the one that starts with like a dog grabbing the, the mask when it comes down a river. And there's like a, uh, the, there's a guy who loses his face. Wait a minute, Fiona from Shrek was in it? And Jim Carrey doesn't have a wife? But I remember this movie, didn't I? I, I watched it all the time. Huh? Oh, no. I didn't see the mask as a kid. I was exposed to the son of the mask. Huh. Produced a whole 11 years later with a noticeably missing Jim Carrey, this film is a whole other story. And I watched it a lot. If this film sits as a dormant memory in your childhood, I apologize in advance as we turn back the clocks to 2005 and revisit the son of the mask. Oh boy, I'm not mentally prepared for this. And even just the act of obtaining this movie was a trial and a half. This film exists nowhere to be streamed. It's not on Netflix or Amazon. I can't even rent it off of YouTube movies. I had to go through the age old method of ugh, physical copies. And boy, was there a reason for it. Just from this DVD menu alone, I think I've seen enough. Huh. What are the special features to this movie? Guess we'll never know. Edge City. Surprisingly enough, this was the actual city from the original film. It's a rainy day at our local museum tour where we dive right into the origins with a reappearance from the only recurring character, Dr. Newman, previously appearing as the psychiatrist seeing a disheveled Stanley Ipkiss. And he takes us right into explaining the magic of the Mart again through a history of the gods Odin and Thor and Loki. A somewhat more throwaway collection of lines from the original now turned into the major plot of the sequel. And speaking of Loki, here he is as Alec Cumming. God, he looks like he just walked off the set of Spy Kids and all. Anyway, he freaks out and wanting to grab the mask from its display, turning into his green monster form and all. And somehow the tour guide is completely unfazed through this whole thing, even when Loki goes as far as to pull his face off of his head. Oh, I knew I remembered something like that. Anyway, with Mitch McConnell out of the way, the cops come flying in. Thanks for dropping by. Dropping? Bye. Huh, you know, I kind of like this whole exchange. I mean, it, it, honestly, it seems like they could have had a good bit of fun during this filming. I wonder if that theme will keep up. It won't. So now we come to a home out in the countryside where the real mask ends up. Here we meet our new good boy that could never hope to reach the standard of the dog from the first film. Seriously, I rewatched the mask recently. That dog is a national treasure and there's no better dog in cinematic history. Fight me. And it's here we meet our protagonist, Tim Avery, named after a certain cartoonist you may have seen the work of before. Very afraid of the concept of having kids as he's being pressured to do because, I mean, look at them. So, when are you two gonna have one for yourselves? I know this was 16 years ago, but man, it just seems toxic by today's standards, and it's not going to improve this whole uh, conflict, shall we say. Tim then imagines the birthing process whereby his wife pops them out like they're on some kind of conveyor belt before snapping back to reality. And honestly, I kind of get Edgar Wright vibes here. It's a little bit jump cut match cutty, but without the polish. That being said, while I did enjoy the bit, it's just 20 seconds long. Feels like a lot of budget wasted for a cutaway joke, you know? And this is gonna be a running theme for the production of the movie. The original mask had a budget of $20 million and turned around $351 million. Massive! Whilst Son of the Mask burned through 80 to $100 million and came back with 60. Yikes. I'm honestly surprised they were given five times the budget considering how far you can make that money stretch. But yeah, you'll be seeing a lot of wasted props with very little screen time, so prepare yourselves. That was flat out embarrassing. The mere mention of the word baby- Hey, he's playing Mario Kart Super Circuit! That's like literally the first game I ever played as like a kid. But this film came out four years later, so like, 
that's, that's already outdated. So with kids being Tim's worst nightmare, his wife tries to goad him into it. And as she gets huffy about it, his restoring response is to... Who's a fish? They will be divorced by tomorrow. Anyway, there's your conflict. The wife Tonya, not Tanya by the way, Tonya with an O, wants a baby and Tim is in trouble for not wanting one. This really should have been something spoken about years ago. This forceful family thing really just rubbed me the wrong way. Anyway, instead for a companion, Tim has Otis the dog. Why do I remember all the details like him riding the ball? I don't know, but it's in my memory and I can't get it out. Here the dog reveals the mask, but it's too tacky to be taken seriously. And diving into the dog's eye? Why? We now see Odin, of course, played by Bob Hoskins of all people, and screaming at Loki to go find that mask and stop wasting time. You know, the power of the mask sure has less impact when you see the god who created it being so... weak. Why don't you just use that all-seeing eye of yours and tell me where it is? <sighs> And oi, you should subscribe, look at these numbers and these statistics, or just click on hashtag DazReviews that I've got below the video to see all the content I make across different channels. More to come from those later. Ignore the bot videos at the very bottom of the page, I don't know what they're about, it doesn't make sense to me. Also, here's my social media links, give us a follow. Can you think while I'm out, I'm just gonna go make a baby with the neighbor. My god, that is toxic. I'm gonna stop showing these clips, otherwise I'll be playing the whole damn movie here. Anyway, speeding along, we learn that Tim wants to be an animator. And much like the original protagonist, he's too shy and spineless to take charge in his own life. Okay. Also, this gives him an actual valid reason to not want to be a father yet, because he's not got the career backup that the wife Ah, uh, whatever. After talking to the scary animation legend boss man in an awfully early 2000s set, we learn his idea was awful, but the door of opportunity was open, as told in dialogue in the next scene. Weird, why not just show us the conversation? And while coming to the company Halloween party that night, finally Tim decides to use that old mask that the dog brought in. This is the crappiest piece of crap in crap town. Wow, this dialogue is sure is, 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 is revolutionary. Cue the cartoony hijinks just 16 minutes into the movie. Oh my god, turn it back! Turn it back! Why does he look like that? Look at the hair! No wonder the original went completely bald. And the face can barely move. Oh god, this is a disaster. And further to that, it's the same kind of setup as the performance with Jim Carrey, except after some shenanigans with a bouncer wearing a bike helmet and turning a girl into more sexual clothing, he goes ahead and overthrows the stage, turns his dancers into more sexualized women, and then changes the entire fabric of reality in the room. Also, it's cringy. The dancing just, it just doesn't. And somehow now the guy can teach everyone the choreography he's doing, as well as change their outfits in staging for this extended music video. It just, it just doesn't work. Why can't you, like, in the original, he just dances coolly, does some cartoony things. How does this guy change the entire set? It just doesn't work. And all the people fawning all over him just feels weird and forced. How is it my brain forgot this entire song piece, but I distinctly remember the... <laughs> Why did you do this to me, brain? Why is this a thing? And immediately afterwards, he dashes on home, because there's no other point to this scene. Honey, I'm home. Oh no, don't tell me the reason it's the son of the mask is because the wife bangs him in his green form. This is cursed. Yup. And if you want to be picky, I guess with him being possessed by the mask, this isn't really consent. But hey, it amplifies your desires, so maybe it's buried in there somewhere. Or the plot just needs to make it happen. As you can imagine, as is the cliche, everyone loves Tim now, and even the boss wants to make a franchise out of his new green character. How meta. And so, in one day, Tim gets a promotion and Tonya is pregnant. Wow, that was a fast confirmation, but hey, here's where the fun begins. Though I'd love to make jokes about how Tim doesn't remember conceiving and how it was totally the neighbor according to logic, or how it's so strange that Tonya randomly vomits in the middle of the day instead of like, you know, morning sickness as proof, but we gotta get moving. And the vomit is bubbles. Cue the montage of a cartoony pregnancy. This is a cursed storyline, but I remember the ultrasound distinctly. 
man, she's gonna burst like in aliens at this rate. And just as quickly, he's born. My god. Oh, there he is. Another Odin and Loki scene. Though this time with Odin possessing a guy. Again, it's kind of got that Edgar Wright Ant-Man mouthing thing going on. Maybe I'm stretching, but like I can totally see this being a thing. Also, like Loki spent nine months and didn't find the mask still. Even though like Odin has an all-seeing eye and just won't tell him where it is. Like, uh, uh, huh? So Otis the dog has now downgraded to a little doghouse as opposed to the room he had before and has stolen the mask for himself. Honestly, I don't blame him as the baby is coddled by the parents. You kind of get his motives as a character. And while playing with some balloons, the baby decides to bless us with... <laughs> Nightmare fuel. Moving back to the Loki plot and it's just downhill from here. See, he's now a green CGI bee and he just won't stop talking. I could have been a doctor if the SAT weren't so culturally biased. What? So he stings a worker, duplicates her, gets a collection of every baby born the same day as, you know, the son of the mask and scares the original. Alrighty then. Here's a montage of the baby screaming in the night. Maybe this is where it was drilled into me that I subconsciously just don't want kids. And after almost killing the baby, it's the next day. With the mum going off to New York for a week. <coughs> so did this film originate with this scream, or is it just an incredibly lazy edit? It certainly hits different now. Story-wise though, Tim is being stretched thin. Juggling work that now has a big pitch meeting at the end of the week, as well as Nightmare Baby and his cartoony upgrades of chaos. And I still feel uncomfortable enough that he didn't even want all this, and just has it all dropped on him from the most ungrateful wife in the world. This performance gave them a Razzie Award for worst on-screen couple, by the way. No surprises there, really. So things go as you expect, really. Baby is horrid, and in all the stress from work, the baby gets plopped in front of the TV, despite Tonya's warnings that it'll turn the kids stupid. Hey! With cartoons on show, baby Avery has some ideas. And to escalate things further, the dog has jealousy issues and runs to dig up that old mask. Oh yeah, it's going there. The dog puts on the mask and his design is just... Abomination! The baby plans to put dad in an insane asylum because kids are assholes, and the dog plans to shoot the baby out of a cannon. God bless America. Time to put these plans into action tomorrow. The baby hops out with a direct mimic to that frog skit, breaking the laws of physics on his lowly baby bone legs before copying Quicksilver and running along the walls. And it plays out with the exact same punchline as the frog skit we just got to watch a moment ago. Inventive. Weren't camera phones a thing by this point? It kind of defeats the whole prank, doesn't it? But it would make logical sense. So nothing happens to Tim arresting wise, despite the plan working out perfectly for the baby, and we move on. Loki continues to burn away the budget with massive prop pieces and disguises as he hunts through each baby on his list, and Tim is knocked out like that one time the Hulk attacked Loki in another reality. God, parenting looks like it sucks. But it moves us on to the horrifying antics of Demon Dog, baiting the baby with an explosive rattler only to have it turn on him a la Wile E. Coyote and the Roadrunner. Jesus Christ, I'm not sleeping tonight. And please, dog, just stop staring at the camera with that horrid grin. This is no longer really a mask movie with the green man. He's gone. It's all just this. Tim worries for his safety, he freaks on seeing what the dog has become now, and it's time for the big event. If you were scarred before, prepare yourself, this is a three minute sequence. Uh, it's all set up to be one big wire pull attack, with a predictable switch halfway through with a gravity defying cartoon baby, and it skips right to 100 immediately, with the dog's eyes popping out of his skull as he grips the floorboards for life, followed by getting crushed into a piano. Classic, if it didn't freeze frame on this deformed carcass. The piano is chucked around and up the stairs, taking out the budget even more. Doggo is crushed into a cube, almost shredded, turned into a helicopter propeller, dropped into tar, turned into a chicken, dragged underground, yelping for help, squeezed, drowned, and squeezed again. And it was all done with classical music underneath. Ah, <sighs> cartoons. Maybe it would be less scarring if it wasn't designed to look like that the whole time. You know, the dog. I don't know, or maybe the fact that it, you know, is supposed to be a real dog. Partially, sort of. 
we go from best boy in film to this. And we're supposed to believe that this, like, is real? Like, uh, <sighs> Nightmare fuel. And what follows is another cartoony scene that I feel translates just way better on screen. It's your classic peeing scene. Now with less visual vomit and just a fun, goofy concept. I'm not going to explain it to you. You can see it for yourself. Maybe I like it because it's actually like practical effects or the imagination and the hysterics of it makes it more better. I don't know. Ironically. It's just this simpler scene that comes right after is way better. Could I have more of this? Please? Well, I don't want more pee, but you know what I mean. And now Loki arrives, knocking out Tim and still not thinking the baby is of the mask. He's blind and also an idiot. The baby continues to taunt Tim, now mimicking his voice perfectly, and as Loki is driving away, he witnesses some of the madness in the car behind him. Literal visual vomit this time. Chasing them to the city now, huh? the baby freaks out at Loki's antics, he confronts them about the mask and corners them into the alleyway. Why would you do that? And the scene is just bad. Loki throws a massive grenade, the baby deflects, to which Loki says, You really are a chip off the old block. What a tense confrontation scene. Anyway, what then happens next is Odin possesses the dad, only to take away Loki's powers just as he powers up and ignores the calls that he's literally just caught the baby which he should already know because he has an all-seeing eye. This is a stupid plotline. And I always remember this scene here because it has the baby crying through the whole thing, whilst in the edit, they just obviously cut out his voice. Like, <laughs> uh. And so now that Tim is back again, he's just in a constant daze for the rest of the film? What? So he gets his pitch meeting and completely fails it for being so aloof, and he tells the news to a worrying mum. Also though, now they have an appreciation for each other for saving each other's lives against Loki, I guess. But the drama's not done yet. Doggo Otis is still feeling jealous. Back to the mask he goes. Oh boy. Also, Loki's returned. It's all coming together, really. He sneaks past a sleeping baby and writes characters on the wall, only for Betty to literally badger him, thinking it's Tim in his own home. Tim. What are you doing in there? It's literally the kid's room. What do you bloody expect? Oh, this writing has fallen apart. So Odin is summoned, shouting, but somehow not waking the baby and gives back Loki's powers. Why did it have to look so erotic? I don't know, but there it is. Insert surname here. So he turns Betty into a nose for being a nosy neighbor, seems like justice to me, and her sneezing is what then wakes Tim up, not the god shouting in a room with a baby monitor in it. Guess who? Oh wow, that's like a deep fake before they were properly a thing. So yeah, Tim is being messed with. Loki nabs the baby and then sticks some TNT up his butt and rockets out of the roof. The fact that this isn't the weirdest thing in this film is honestly beyond me. And where's the masked dog this whole time? Ah. So now, finally, the mum returns, everything's wrecked, Tim attacks her, and she sees Nosy Betty, and they go to get the mask from the dog. How does Tim know he has the mask again? Uh... And where he is, is on a date mentioned earlier. So what's the point of him wearing the mask? Oh, whatever. And with a little convincing, he releases the mask. Didn't know that was an option, really. Kind of thought the mask, you know, forcibly possessed people and, to, you know, deleted the memories of the moment. Uh. Loki and the baby have a showdown in that alleyway. They can both spin, become cowboys, and... Gotcha. <laughs> also, they play Super Twister, which comes off as a little weird with how giddy Loki is and how babyish the baby is, you know? So the parents crash the scene, the baby would do a Fortnite dance here if it existed at the time, and Alan Cumming gives us some great line delivery. No fear! That crashed through me! We not! Quality. They trade mask and baby, but oh no, the god of mischief is mischievous! And takes the baby for themselves since they've bonded in the last 30 seconds. Otis bites Loki's balls, his other balls reach out to space, and the mask flies onto Tim's face. Can you believe he's only appeared one time in this whole 75 minute runtime? <sighs> 
It's final act time, the final fight. Time to burn the rest of what's left of the budget. Here's a Wario-esque green man car you'll see for mere seconds as we rip up the road and enter the final arena. Kicking off with a kind of anticlimactic boxing match with poor punches and a fart attack, and then throwing him into a trunk. Moving on, we have Loki's pencil attack, an actual pretty inventive attack sequence to see in live action. Since it's clearly all been done before in actual cartoons, it's, it's not bad, kind of. I would have liked some originality with the idea, but oh, let me give what you can. And then finishing it off is decision time. Since they're clearly evenly matched, even though one's a god and another's just using a tool created by that god. Yeah. So the baby in all this build up chooses Loki, cause kids are assholes, till Tim takes off the mask. Again, didn't really know that was allowed, and the baby chooses him. The way the film really ends is Loki attacks them anyway with a hammer, inferior to his brothers of course, Tim randomly has the strength to stop it, and Odin takes away his powers one final time, appearing in person for once just to berate him, I guess. And Tim interrupts to give him the father talk. But you're his father. He's your son. There is nothing more important in this entire universe than your relationship with your family. Okay, but is the baby still cursed, and is the house still a wreck? Like, that's gonna need some major insurance, that's not a- that's not a good joke. Why did I- like, insurance jokes? Are you serious? Tim just gives them the mask, they give a smile, and head home together. Tim succeeds at work with his new idea of a baby versus dog show, they watch the intro of this new 3D show, and it's a happily ever after. Oh, and the wife is pregnant again. Yeesh. I cannot believe I've sunk double digit hours watching this movie. It is just a complete mess and a classic tale of corporate incompetence. This film vilified Jamie Kennedy, the protagonist, and he even went on to say that it hurt his morale and he's learned that he needs to have control and have his voice in a project because here he certainly didn't and look where it got him. Scathing reviews and several awards, worst actor, worst couple, worst remake and sequel, core. And and it's all because of Jim Carrey's change in opinion after doing the Ace Ventura sequel with diminishing returns. A wrench that literally changed the entire premise of the sequel. Just because you have the powers to do something doesn't mean you really should. From the production hell, the unhappy actors on set, the overblown budget and the over the top visual vomit, this film was destined to crash and burn, especially with the legacy of the original on its shoulders. Maybe the direction could have been cool if it had that Edgar Wright flair, but man, the director is clearly missing something. Still, it's the closest thing to a Majora's Mask movie I guess we'll ever get. Unfortunately, I couldn't dig up more underbelly details beyond quotes and final outcomes, but boy did it remain as a dormant memory of a fever dream-like experience in my brain. Though I did find out this one thing, according to Mike Richardson, executive producer on both films, they've been talking about reviving the mask, both in film and in comics. They've had a couple of false starts already, but it's just a thought. God save us all. For now though, I think I prefer my CGI a little more subtle, or maybe just better looking. Also, that child is walking around somewhere right now. By now, he's 18 years old this year. <sighs> For now, my name's been Daz. You didn't really care. Next Monday, we'll cover an adaptation starring the most liked actor right now, and I'll see you in a bit. Also, look at this. I was going through like the physical manual of Son of the Mask because this was actually a you know a physical copy I received. And look at this, Boo, Zino, and the Snurgs. What is that? <laughs> anyway, I've had enough of this movie. Ugh, into the permanent memory banks it goes. <laughs>